Hey, what's up guys? Gordon Briley here with Pheno X Fitness and Nutrition and today is a topic that is really important and it's a lot of people are confused when it comes to macros and that's what this video is going to be about. It's kind of to help you place where you might want to fall within this macro scale and I'm just going to help give you situations where um, you could kind of use to decide maybe where you belong. And one thing about the macro scale, and I labeled this macros, where should I be? And that's for the reasons that I just explained. And I have a, a scale here that I like to reference, and it's a healthy to sick. And that's kind of what we're gonna go through, is you're gonna notice that the macro groups that are outside of the norm, or what they will call extreme, like keto's often labeled extreme, uh, the more sick you are, the more relevant these come. And this is going to help you learn where maybe you should be on this scale and how you can start to utilize these uh, based on maybe your health um, currently. So with that being said, when we want to be, when we're healthy, and we're not having metabolic issues, we're not having metabolic dysfunction, we don't have potential uh, fatty liver disease, and our metabolism is essentially just running well, then this is definitely gonna be, one, you're gonna be associated with being healthy. If your BMI is of normal weight, uh, you have a decent amount of muscle mass, you exercise, uh, this is going to be the area that you're most likely going to want to land because a balanced diet is giving really balanced nutrients. So we're getting a balanced amount of fat, balanced amount of carbs, and a balanced amount of protein. So that means that you just kind of need less aggressive tactics when it, in regards to your macros. So some of these people, and I just put some general, there's going to be people outside of this or specific situations, but again, I just want to kind of keep this at... A basic level but also give enough detail that you guys can actually utilize this so some of the people or situations that I put in here is athletes so athletes are going to need all the different macronutrients uh, which are going to provide a ton of micronutrients so for optimal recovery for protein synthesis for all the different things you, a balanced diet is going to work really well uh, for weight loss, for some people, if you have a healthy metabolism, you're going to be able to utilize carbs and fats at the same time. And that's one of the big things I talk about in some of my other videos is when it comes to weight loss or improving your metabolic dysfunction, pre-diabetes, diabetes, mixing carbohydrates and fat can be a big problem. And that's because your metabolism essentially is dysfunctional or it's broken. And combining these two macronutrients, they just fight each other. So one gets used, one gets stored. Glucose is always going to get used first. Fat is hanging around. It's easily stored. So I don't want to get too much into that. I've made videos about that. But that's why someone that's with that healthy metabolism falls into this area. So if you have a healthy BMI, you have no metabolic dysfunction. If you're someone that's pregnant, this is going to be something that will help give you all those nutrients. If you're high stress or if you're looking for muscle gain, and that again kind of falls with being athletic. And so I did put some uh, percentages to base these off of. These are the ones that I kind of go off of. So balance is 40, 30, 30. I don't know if you can see these, but P is in protein, 30% carbs, 30% fat. That's very well balanced. I always go with the high percentage of protein because of the value of building blocks of life and then the high thermogenic effect when it comes to actually your body utilizing it. It takes a lot of energy. So uh, diet or uh, being an athlete, it's always going to be associated or should be associated with high protein. So now we're going to start heading in an opposite direction. And again, we can start to use this scale here, the healthy to sick scale. So we're just going to step down to low carb. And I have 60% fat, 30% protein, and 10% carbs. 
So this isn't keto, it's not super extreme, but this is gonna help you to kind of label yourself and put yourself in the category where it actually makes sense. If you're not completely diabetic, if you're maybe pre-diabetic, if you're an endurance athlete, so someone that needs, needs to utilize fat um, and burn fat, then this might be something that might be advantageous for you as an endurance athlete. If you have insulin resistance, and we definitely have made videos about that, that is something that you absolutely positively should understand because it's really the most detrimental thing to health and really the cause for most general, uh, most common diseases is because of this metabolic state. So your cellular health, if you're someone that needs to work on that, um, your cells aren't functioning the, the way that they should, low carb is going to, in some ways, mimic fasting. Not quite as good as keto or fasting itself, but it will work with cellular health that will help to make you more insulin sensitive. Um, keto is going to do that even more powerfully, and that's why you would utilize it if you're more sick. And then for weight loss, for some people, low carb works wonderful for weight loss. And we're going to see that most of these, or actually all of these, contain weight loss in them. Because depending on your situation, it can elicit that response. But it can also not elicit that because your system is broken. You may be insulin resistant. And that diet may not work well if you're in that situation. So remember, if this is something that you think you may have, you can use your hips to waist ratio. Uh, your BMI itself is a reflection of your um, odds of being insulin resistant. But we know that most Americans are insulin resistant. So this is, to me, is always kind of the go-to place to start, uh, depending on your situation. So now, if you're someone that's, that's looking for one of these, either weight loss, if you have insulin resistance, you wanna work on your cellular health, any of these, then you may fall into this category. So 60, 30, 10 is kind of out here. And the more healthy you become, because you work on your, your weight issue or your insulin resist resistance issue, the more that you can start to drift this way and start to climb out of this because it no longer is needed to be that extreme. You can start working towards a healthy diet where you can be balanced because your cells aren't dysfunctioning. And that's the ultimate goal is to work towards a balanced diet, but you don't get to use that yet because you've broken the system through some of the nutritional uh, habits that you have or environmental exposures, a lot of different reasons, but we won't get into that now either. So if we go back to this healthy to sick scale, if we're someone that is diabetic, then we're gonna find ourselves where this is actually more relevant because it's more extreme. And the fact that it is more extreme is why it works for some of these issues and it works very well. So if you're someone that has metabolic dysfunction, really that means in a lot of cases you actually have diabetes. Again, you're insulin resistant, but you're very heavily, you may have the beginning stages of um, fatty liver disease or NASH. Um, so these are again, just reference points. If you know that you have some of these things, then you may want to creep down the scale more. Uh, APOE44, that's a genotype that makes you very high risk for Alzheimer's. So again, we could get into this stuff in a separate video, but this is something that's really cool to know because your risk factors for uh, Alzheimer's is very relevant. They actually call Alzheimer's type three diabetes. So this diet, the ketogenic diet team tends to help with people to scave off the potential. Just because you have the APOE44 allele does not mean you're gonna get Alzheimer's, but if you're eating and you're pre-diabetic or you are diabetic, chances are your risk for Alzheimer's go up significantly. So you're gonna to wanna to find yourself in this category. Does it need to be 
I have here 90% fat, 7% protein, 3% carbs. Now that's kind of a clinical ketogenic diet. So that's very, very heavy on the fat side. But if you're someone that's suffering from some of these things, you get pushed more to this edge where a clinical based ketogenic diet is going to work. But we don't necessarily have to live here. We could start here and start to climb our way towards less aggressive macronutrient ratio. So we could go towards um, 80% and 17, say 20% and then 5% carbs and start climbing our way as we improve our BMI, our weight, and we start to, if we're exercising to get there, this isn't really great for, let's say, resistance training uh, because carbohydrates are actually going to work much better. And that's why when you're an athlete, that 40, 30, 30 works great. But this, it's great to consume fat because you remove glucose from the diet and allow your cells. So we work on that cellular health that's in this category as well. This is very similar to fasting because there isn't glucose in that response is beautiful when it comes to fixing insulin resistance because the cells are no longer inundated with glucose and they have that time to become resistant and start to fix the met metabolic dysfunction that you're suffering. So we're working on climbing our way out of here and as we improve the need to be so drastic decreases. We're working our way back towards healthy. So our goal is to move through these macronutrient ratios. And the reason that we use macronutrients or ratios is to, is to essentially collect data. What is and what is not working. If I'm doing 97.3 and it's working, then I know that that was a good set point. If I went 60, 30, 10 and it started to work, but it didn't work great. And then I switched to a little more heavy handed and increase those macronutrient ratios and you start to see success and you start to see your body recover. Well, okay, that was just, that was good information. That was good data to know that that's what it took. That was the trigger point for you to see success because some people sometimes go low carb here but it wasn't quite enough. It wasn't drastic enough for your situation and you really belonged here. You didn't need to be here, heavy handed keto, but you needed to be here. So it's all about testing macronutrient ratios and finding out what works for you. So we've talked about keto, low carb, balance. We're working our way towards a healthy macronutrient ratio. So now let's go to the other side. So low fat diet, let's talk low carb real quick for reference for low fat. Low carb is something you could live long term. There really isn't much in the way of detrimental effects when it comes to consuming these type of macronutrients. So you're, you could live in this zone if you feel really good and your, met, your metabolism is functioning well then this is a long-term diet. You can have this as a lifestyle. This starts to be less likely that you'll maintain it because of how strict it is. But if you find yourself somewhere in this region and it feels really good, you look good, all of these different reasons for wanting to stay there, that's fine. But as we go more extreme the other way, we're gonna start potentially running into some issues and you may need to find yourself in a certain area depending on your situation. So anyways, low fat, I have 45% carbs, 40% protein, and 15% fat. These again are the macronutrient ratios that I like to set for most people starting off. And some of the reasons that you may want to actually partake in a low fat diet is something along the lines of familial hypercholesterolemia. So that's just gonna be high levels of cholesterol, keeping it very simple, um, LDL, and this is usually passed down through genes, and you're just at a very high risk for heart disease and issues like that. So that's where they throw you on statins, which we won't get into that now either, but 
this may be a way, and this is where you may find yourself in a more of a vegetarian style diet. So this can get kind of changed around depending on your beliefs and what your goal is. And we'll kind of get into that a little bit. But again, you see this over here. Well, how does weight loss occur in every single one of these categories? And that's through um, a calorie deficit, which I've made a video about that. So understanding that part of it in combination with how to use macros is going to be really important. But these, all these diets, and that's what we need to understand, all these diets work for weight loss. We're always told well, low carb is the only way that it works. Well, it only worked for that person probably because they fell within this criteria. Maybe if you have this criteria, that wouldn't work well. So we have to find out who you are and what your situation is for you to find out what makes most sense. So this might make most sense for six to eight months as you climb from the sick portion towards more of a healthy BMI, you're adding muscle mass, stuff like that, which is improving your glucose utilization. And now, again, we're working towards that. So diabetes control, and I put an asterisk on this because there is some study, some information, uh, some people have seen a reduction in um, diabetes, but I personally believe that you're gonna have a much better result over here in this low carb world as opposed to um, trying to control diabetes with a, a lower fat diet. This is gonna work much better, much faster, but it is possible for some people that you could utilize this for diabetes control. You kind of have to test it. If this hasn't worked, then you're gonna come over here because I always like to go here first because it is safe uh, and it is usually very effective when you're in that metabolic state. So if maybe you have gallbladder issues um, and even I put this on here for extreme weight loss. So low fat diets have been known forever for bodybuilders, let's say. So using a low fat diet often is gonna work. We know that it works for weight loss because what it does is takes away one of the macronutrients. And when I said mixing fats and carbohydrates, they don't work well together. And that's why these here tend to work really good for weight loss is because they separate fat and carbs. So if you're in a healthy metabolism, this one works okay. But if not, you're gonna to wanna to separate those carbohydrates because of the, the fighting effect that they have on each other, especially when you're in a, a poor, metabolic, uh, poor metabolic health. So these are just some of the situations for why you may wanna use a low fat diet. So one of the things you would wanna think about though is low fat means low cholesterol. And in this case, that's great because you're actually reducing cholesterol because it's just not in your diet. That's one way to do it. Again, I still think this is a much better way of doing it, but if that's the case, maybe this diet is the right diet for you. So once we see the recovery of some of this, maybe we start heading a little more this way. If it's familial, you may have to stay within this zone a little more swayed to this side because of that specific issue that you have. Now, the last thing that I want to get, because I think you understand how moving back towards balance as you recover your health, just kind of the last thing that I want to talk about is uh, how exercise is going to affect this. So if we're resistance training, and the ultimate goal, and this is something that I've also made a video and I want to do another one on, is now using macros but manipulating them. And I absolutely love this. And this is what I do. And this is where like I have success in when I want to lose weight and it's accelerated and people are like, how do you do this? There's multiple reasons that I do this, but it's called macro manipulation. That's what I've coined it. So what we're going to do is sometimes if we're working on our health, 
For me specifically, I'll use myself as an example, I don't lose weight really well over here. So in the low carb world, I don't spend as much time here because it just doesn't work. I've tested all my data points and it hasn't ever done well for weight loss. So I find myself over here more time than I do over here. And then when I've reached my um, weight goal, I actually live here and I just kind of uh, eat a balanced diet and that feels good and it's simple. But what I do to get there is I'll go, let's say, I'll go 12 weeks, 12 weeks of low fat. I don't want to go much lower than that because low fat means low, low cholesterol, uh, high carbs, and it also means that your sex hormone, so testosterone, uh, estrogen, all these different things, depending on what sex you are, can be affected by having low fat. So I don't like to do this for all that long. So what I'll do is go 12 weeks here and then I'll shift way back here and get lots of fat and um, bring those levels up so my sex hormones will actually stay stabilized. They'll come back to life by implementing some macro manipulation. I'll just throw in maybe two weeks over here and then I'll circle back here, back to low fat, and I'll utilize that, and I'll keep bouncing, and I set my time depending on how it works, so you might be the complete opposite. You might actually go here for 12 weeks and just spend two over here, and that's stuff that you will learn to play with after you've kind of figured yourself out and got yourself back to a better position. But the benefit to this is you never stray too far away from any of the macronutrients because your body, if you just do low fat keto all the time, your body starts to only burn fat. And that's not necessarily a good thing because if you reintroduce uh, carbohydrates, the body really has a difficult time uh, dealing with those because it never utilizes them. So if you're just keto all the time, you've done this long term and then you just fall off the wagon and you start eating carbs, that's the problem is you're just, you completely, your body is no longer used to burning this and you become what's called metabolically inflexible. So I like to make sure that I'm either, if I'm healthy, I'm eating the macronutrients in a, a decent ratio where they have both, but I'm exercising and I'm active to utilize both, not store them, but I will jump from one side to the other within relatively short periods of time. So my body never gets um, to the point that it cannot utilize one or the other macronutrient. So macro manipulation is something that I utilize and that's the way that I keep my hormonal health good. That's the way that I actually, and then keep, keep with weight loss because this one works really well but I'm also working on my cellular health short term. And I know this part might be starting to get confusing and I can make a video on this specifically, but for those of you that do get it or want to ask more questions about that, this is a good opportunity to um, understand that it exists and that can be really advantageous for uh, achieving long-term weight loss and keeping your metabolic flexibility and always be able to utilize all the macronutrients. So hopefully this was an okay description of how this works and maybe where to find yourself and to be working towards this balanced diet because this is a great place to live. Lots